welcome back and here we are in video 9.2 and here are some examples of number lines that you might have drawn for video 9.1 and I just wanted to show them to you because it's really what we're thinking about and looking about looking at when we are um, adding our decimals so here's our problem that we started with and you can see we have three and ninety five hundredths plus two and seven hundredths right so we have a few different number lines here, and I just wanted to show you different ways that you can break down your decimals to think about that. So they all start at three and 95 hundredths, but they all add in a different way. And when they're adding, what they're doing is they're taking that two and seven tenths, and they're looking at it in a little different way. So here they're adding two, and then they're adding the seven tenths. So three and 95 hundredths, becomes five and 95 hundredths. And then we go seven tenths more. So think about 95 hundredths becoming six and uh, five hundredths becoming six and 15 hundredths, six and 25 hundredths, six and 35 hundredths, 45 hundredths, 55 hundredths, 65 hundredths, okay? So sorry, my dots aren't right there but I'm adding seven more tenths on, right? So my nine is becoming a six and my going up one, right? Okay. And then I have three and 95 hundredths. This time I take five hundredths and I add it on so that I get up to four. And where did that five hundredths came from? That came from two and 70 hundredths. So I just took five hundredths away, right? Took five of these hundredths away, and now I have two and 65 hundredths left. Do you see how that works? So then five hundredths got me up to four. Then I add two and 65 hundredths. That's also gonna get me to six and 65 hundredths. Okay, one more way to do it. Start at three and 95 hundredths, add my five hundredths. That gets me up to four. Then add two, that gets me to six and then add 65 hundredths, that gets me to six and 65 hundredths. I don't know about you, but I like this one down here because I want to think about each part. Now, don't forget, a big part of our learning today is to think about this number. We can think of it as five hundredths and two and 65 hundredths. We can think of it as two and seven tenths. We can think of it as five hundredths, two and 65 hundredths, okay? So we're really working our decimal brain thinking today. So stay with me and keep thinking. All right. So now let's try a different number. And I want you to write this one down in your notes. Okay. Remember we said you could do notes on a piece of paper or on page 80 if you have space or somewhere where you have space. Just make sure you put 9.2 so you can show me your notes later. Okay. So what is a reasonable estimate for two and nine tenths plus six and six tenths, a reasonable estimate. And we're gonna have an Ed Puzzle question right here. You put in what you think those two would be rounding your decimals, right? Okay. And hopefully you put your answer in there so I can see your answer. And I would think a reasonable estimate, estimate would be 10 because my two and nine tenths can become three and my six can become seven, six and six tenths can become seven, right? Because my six tells my six to go up one more. My nine tenths tells my two to go up one more and three plus seven is 10, right? Okay. Let me just clear that off really quick. Um, and we know it's going to be a little less than 10 because we rounded both of them up. Okay. Back to thinking about our whole number rounding, right? Okay. So when you used your number line, um, for Yuna's problem, right? Um, we can also think about using a number bond. All right. So we're going to think about using a number bond. So, if we rounded two and nine tenths up to three,
that would mean that we added one tenth to it, right? Okay, so we need one more tenth. And where can we get that one tenth from? We can get it from our six and six tenths right here. Okay, and I know this might be something a little bit new for some of you. So I really want you to pay close attention and notice what I'm going to show you next with this number bond. Okay, check this out. All right, here is an example of a number bond, two and nine tenths plus six and six tenths. So I'm taking my six and six tenths and I'm breaking it into one tenth and six and five tenths. You see how I just borrowed one of my one tenths? So this is still six and six tenths, but now it's one tenth and six and five tenths. I'm going to take my one tenth and I'm going to add it onto my two and nine tenths. So it's going to be three. Now notice we're not estimating right now. We estimated to come up with our idea to see what we were going to do. But now we know we're going to add it onto here. So we have three, but that leaves us with six and five tenths here. Then it's easier to add those together and we get nine and five tenths. And then we think to ourselves, is that close to our estimate? Well, yes, our estimate was 10. So that's very good. I want you to go ahead and write this down in your notes right now because this is very important. This is what we're calling number bonding. And the reason we're calling number bonding is because we're breaking our six and six tenths down to one tenth and six and five tenths. Remember how we would make our number bonds like that? So we have two different ways that we are finding our answers. One is number bond and the other one is the arrows, how we're jumping on our number line, the arrow way and the number bond way. Okay. So write this down. If you don't have it written down yet, go ahead and pause the video because I'm going to move on and we're going to look at the arrow way. Okay. So here we're adding the same thing, right? Two and nine tenths and six and six tenths. Two and nine tenths, I'm going to add one tenth and I'm going to jump to three. And then what do I have left? I have six and five tenths, which is going to take me to nine and five tenths. We're still breaking our six and six tenths into two parts. Do you see our two parts there? Okay. But this is our arrow way because we're taking one part and then we're taking the other part to jump up there. Okay. So now I have a question for you that I want you to put into Edpuzzle. Using a number bond and an arrow, we can show that two and nine tenths plus six and six tenths is equal to nine and five tenths. Is 9 and 5 tenths reasonable based on our original estimate? Is this a reasonable answer? Okay, so you're going to go ahead and tell me there if you think it's a reasonable answer. All right, and now I have another question for you to try to practice this. I want you to think, oh, sorry, I lost it there. Where is my other one for you to try? There it is. Eight hundredths plus five hundredths. Okay, eight hundredths plus five hundredths. Think about that. I'm going to see if I can just do it right here. Eight hundredths plus five hundred. Do you want to do it the arrow way? Or do you want to do it the number bond way? What do you think? Okay. Maybe you're thinking, well, eight hundredths, I could break this apart and I have two hundredths, right? Because I know that two plus three makes five. Oh, sorry. That is not a very good two. And five hundredths, sorry, three hundredths because two plus three makes five. And I know that eight and two makes 10. So eight hundredths and two hundredths, that's going to become one tenth, right? Because eight and two makes 10. And then I would have three hundredths more. So number bond way, right? I can add them together there. Can you do that? Can you do that the arrow way? Okay. Think about it. Give it a try. And I'll see you on the next video. Thank you for trying hard.